Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reap Huron, and today we're going to be doing another build guide. This is for the EPC, the Experimental Plasma Charger. This is Driller's second secondary weapon. This is the Plasma Pistol, and this is probably the one that you see most Drillers running around using. A lot of people really like it, it's pretty versatile. I'm going to be going over three builds without any overclocks, and then we'll talk about the overclocks afterwards. Go over all the builds that I use with them. First up is going to be more of a utility tool. So you usually use this for EPC mining so that you can mine minerals easier. It also works pretty well against single targets and crowds, but it is tricky to get used to. The second build is going to be more of an AOE build that just focuses on charge shots. And the third build is going to be a direct damage build that just focuses on just spam firing the gun more or less. So in tier one, we have increased damage. This gives us five more damage. Nice. We have increased ammo, 24 more battery. That's pretty good. And we have increased charge shot. The charge shot has both a charge shot damage. I think this is when it directly hits something and it has a charge damage AOE. This is when it indirectly hits something. So when the ball is flying next to something, this counts as the indirect damage, I believe. And then once the, the ball actually hits something, that's the uh, other part of the damage. So with my tool set up for the EPC mining, I go with extra ammo here. That way I can just use it more often for doing that. Um, mostly I want this for utility and I'm going to be using my primary weapon to take out the majority of enemies. I will use the EPC to pick off any flying enemies because Driller kind of struggles with that. The EPC isn't great at taking out flying enemies, but it's okay at least with this build. It also kind of struggles at enemies on the ceiling, so spitters can be a little bit of a problem with this. You will have to kind of lead your shots. In tier 2 we have heat shield. This makes it so we don't get as much heat buildup per charge shot. That can be really good, and I do take this uh, every once in a while. The other option is overcharged plasma accelerator. This increases the projectile speed of normal shots. So this is not charge shots, and it doesn't really mess with your charge shot uh, speed when you get used to the EPC mining. I usually take this one just so that I can use this more as a weapon, so I can pick off flying things and things crawling on the ceiling at a distance. I don't have to lead the shots as much. It still doesn't make the shots incredibly fast, but it makes them a little bit quicker and a little bit more likely to hit if I'm really struggling with something at a distance. In tier 3, we have improved charge efficiency. This makes it so whenever we use a charge shot, we consume two less ammo. So we go from eight ammo consumed to six ammo. That's pretty good. That makes it so we can use this more often. Our second option is charge speed. So our charge speed is cut from 1.67 seconds to 0.7 seconds. That's a pretty good increase, I would say. And then we also have the cooling rate. So this is how quickly our gun cools down. This one's not bad either. For the build that I'm using though, I pretty much always go with the improved charge efficiency. This is so that I can use the charge shots more often because you need to use those to get the EPC mining. So the more times I can do it, the more efficient the gun is gonna be. In tier four, we have uh, increased charge shot radius. So a bigger AOE for the charge shot, pretty good. We have more ammo, also good. And then we have increased charge shot damage and increased charge shot area damage. All of these are pretty good. Again, I'm going to be taking extra ammo though. This is just so that I can use it more often for EPC mining. And tier five, we have flying nightmare. This makes it so your, your charge shots now do all of their direct damage whenever they're hitting any enemy, but your uh, charged ball no longer explodes on impact. It just keeps going. This gives you more charge shot damage overall, but this does lower the effective radius of it. This is better if you just want to be firing it down like long hallways or long tunnels in uh, either the tunnels that you drill or that are drilled by Doretta. It's pretty good. It's also great for taking out a bunch of small enemies like swarmers and like uh, jellyfish. Uh, it can be pretty good against Mactera too. It may not kill them, but it will hurt them. And that can be pretty important, especially if you're with a team. Our second option is then containment filled. This is the one that we're going to be going with for this particular build. Thin Containment Field makes it so after you shoot a charge shot uh, with a regular shot before that charge shot impacts something, you can shoot it. Other allies can also shoot this too. I don't know if enemies can shoot it. I have had conflicting reports about that. So if you know, please tell me in the comment section down below. Uh, but what this does is then it explodes into a big ball. This deals 240 area damage in a three meter radius. This also breaks up terrain. This is what we really want to do so that we can break the terrain up easier. And then additionally, this also makes it so you reduce heat on both your charge and normal shots. Then we have plasma burn. This makes it so your regular shots do extra damage as well as have a chance to light enemies on fire or build up the heat meter so that they can then catch on fire. This one's also really good. This is the usual build that I run if I want to run this as a tool and I want to just use this for mining. I will still use it against crowds. I will still use it against flying enemies and against enemies like high up on the ceiling. 
But aside from that, most of the time I'm just using this to mine things like nitra, morkite, gold, whatever it might be that I need. For the charge shot build, you could either go with the larger battery or with the larger charge damage. Usually I go with the larger charge damage here. In tier two, I go with the heat shield. This is just so that I can use the charge shot more often. I don't overheat the gun as much and it just makes it a little bit easier for me. In tier three, either the charge shot or the faster charge up speed both of these are really good if you want to do more damage per second, especially if you're just switching between your guns quickly, then I would go with the extra charge speed. If you're using it every once in a while, want to be more ammo efficient, then go with the increased charge efficiency. Both of these are pretty good options. I usually go with the increased speed though. In tier four, you really don't have a bad option here. All of these are good. You could go with a larger radius, you could go with more ammo, or you could go with more charge shot damage. Usually I go with the extra ammo here just so that I have a little bit more. If I'm going with the improved charge shot efficiency, then I will go with more charge shot damage or the larger AOE radius. It's really your call here. And then in tier five, I usually go with flying nightmare. This does reduce the amount of size that your uh, plasma shot does have but you can kill a lot of small things very easily with it and it's great for dealing with jellyfish and swarmers. It can also be pretty good dealing with Mactera and it's not bad to be firing into groups of grunts either, especially on like escort missions. And then the last build is a more direct shot damage build. With this one, I usually take the increased shot damage here because it's a nice increase of five damage. I go with the faster velocity here, just makes it easier for you to hit those shots. In tier three, honestly, all of these are fine. It's really your call. If you're concerned about the gun overheating, take the radiator. Uh, if you're not, then either of these other two are fine if you want to be using charge shots. Tier 4, I usually go with extra ammo. Um, it just kind of synergizes well with this. And then tier 5, I go with plasma burn. This is just so that I can light things on fire. This build can be pretty good with the plasma burn if it's combined with the sludge pump because the sludge is flammable. I should have mentioned that in the corrosive sludge pump video, and I didn't. But your sludge is flammable with that, so if it comes in contact with any heat source, it will catch fire. This can be things like the minigun overheating with its uh, exhaust vectoring. This includes the plasma charger, at least if you have plasma burn, or if you have persistent plasma as an overclock. Either one of those can light the uh, sludge on fire, which is pretty useful. So plasma burn, really good if you want to combine with the sludge pump. This is also decent with the cryo cannon if you plan on using the thermal shock effect. And it can just be good for picking off things like Mactera at a distance. So if you want to use this more as a high-powered version of the Sabata, this isn't a bad option to do this with. All right, now let's talk about the overclocks. And first up, we have our clean overclocks. First up is energy rerouting, which energy rerouting is one of those overclocks that's nothing but a bonus, and you can build it however you'd like. It works with all the builds that I just suggested. So if you want to go with the tool build, you can. If you want to go with AOE, you can. And if you want to go with uh, direct damage, spam fire, you can. This just gives you a larger battery capacity by 16, and it reduces the charge shot speed up. So you really don't need this one if you're going to go with a charge shot build. You could and get it down to only a half second charge up. So if you want to go with full uh, ammo efficiency like this and get used to EPC mining, that's a great way to do it because you have a ton of extra bullets this way. Um, you could go with Flying Nightmare. You could go with Plasma Burn. All of these are great options with energy rerouting. And it's an overclock that I've been using pretty often recently. I find it pretty useful just because I can mix and match builds with it however I'd like. Our second clean overclock is Magnetic Cooling Unit. This increases the cooling rate and this reduces the heat uh, generated per charge shot. This one can also be a really good learning tool when you're first trying to EPC mine. And that's mostly where I'd recommend it. So you could go with something like this or you could even go with more cooling here and make this very efficient for you to start EPC mining or learning how to EPC mine. So you're not running out of bullets that often and you're not overheating the gun that much. A lot of people do consider this one to kind of be a crutch though, because some of the other overclocks are better for this. And really, this is probably the weakest overclock for the EPC, simply because it doesn't really do anything besides just make it so you don't make mistakes. That being said, that's great when you're first learning though. So it's a very useful learning tool. But once you have gotten pretty good at EPC mining, it's not gonna be as good as either Persistent Plasma, which is just a better combat overclock, and it's not gonna be as efficient as Heat Pipe if you get used to that one. So it's kind of in a weird spot, I would say. Our first balanced overclock is Heat Pipe. This makes it so it consumes less ammo per charge shot. Our charge speed buildup is faster but our heat buildup when charged is much faster as well as our heat generate is much quicker. So with this one, without building it for taking away the heat, it can be very touchy to use. Your gun can charge up really quick. You can EPC mine very fast with it, but 
it's kind of difficult to get used to because you will likely overheat your gun very quickly. I always do whenever I'm using this overclock, and it used to be a really, really strong overclock. It used to be one of probably the strongest overclocks in the game, just because of the sheer amount of utility it gave you. Now, not so much. This is really just for EPC mining. So once again, I'd recommend going with larger battery. I would definitely recommend going with heat shield in tier two, because otherwise this weapon is very difficult to charge up. You only have, it fills like a split second to fire the gun and then not overheat it. Improved charge shot efficiency is great here because then you're only using four shots. Going with more ammo again, because it's just uh, useful for this. And then going with thin containment filled, same build that I just recommended for the magnetic cooling unit, but it works really well with this one too. Uh, I would highly recommend you take this one if you're going to take any of them. The cooldown is also not bad if you want to take for this or the charge speed. Really, any of these tier threes are fine. I do like this one the most, though, because you're essentially using half the amount of ammo that you otherwise would to EPC mine. So you can do it twice as much, potentially. Our next one is heavy hitter. This one's pretty straightforward. This one just gives you more uh, regular damage. So we get 12 more base damage. We go from 20 damage to 32 damage. That's a pretty good increase. Our heat generated is more per regular shot, but not per charge shot. You can use this one with charge shots, but it's usually just better to spam fire the regular shots. And we do lose out on ammo. Usually the way that I like to build this is just for plasma burn. So you can go with even more increased damage. So we go from 20 to 40 damage, doubling our damage. I really like that. Go with the extra velocity per regular shot. Since we're not using charge shots, neither one of these really help us. So the cooling will help us out more. Going with extra ammo in tier 4, this way we get back to a, almost our normal amount of ammo, and then going with plasma burn. This one can actually rack up a pretty good amount of damage per second. I like this build. Um, if you want to have something more heavy hitting this than the Sabata per shot, and can stand the slower movement speed of the EPC shots, this one's a really good one to take. Then we move on to our unstable overclocks, and first up we got overcharger. Overcharger is pretty cool. This lowers our cooling rate. Increases our charge shot damage by quite a bit, our area damage by quite a bit, increases the charge radius, but also increases the amount of ammo used per charge shot. So the way I like to build this one is going with extra ammo or going with extra charge shot damage. It's really your call. Uh, the extra charge shot damage can ramp up your damage quite a bit with this, and it's pretty fun to use. Going with the extra cooling rate, because we're going to be charging this up. Regular shots, I don't use that much when I'm using overcharger. It, it's not really a bad option to be doing that, though, because your normal shot damage is the exact same. Your uh, rate of fire and your battery capacity is at the same. So if you do find yourself using just regular shots pretty often, maybe to pick off things like Mactera or things on the ceiling, then the uh, plasma accelerator is also really good. Now in tier three, all of these are pretty decent. You can go with the cooling rate and have a little bit better cooling than you normally would. I usually don't take that one though. Usually I go with the charge shot ammo efficiency just so that we get back down to the eight shot so I'm not taking 10 every time I'm using this. But the charge up speed is also pretty nice because you can charge this up and fire it very quick. In tier 4, all of these are pretty good options again. Larger AoE, so we go from 2.4 to 3.6 meters, that's pretty big. You could also go with increased ammo, always a good option. Or you could go with even more charge shot damage. So we go up to 135 damage with both of these. This is usually the way that I like to build this because I'm just trying to hit really hard with it. But ammo, I switch between pretty often too. Uh, and then in tier 5, I usually like to go with Flying Nightmare. This one, we lose out on the area damage, but our charge shot damage is pretty immense. We will cut through crowds pretty quick. Our effective radius is still 1 meter. Going with the extra uh, AoE is not quite a full meter because this is not, that's not exactly how this works. So it's not that great to be going with extra AOE. This is the way that I usually build overcharger. Again, you can go with ammo here. That's a pretty good option. Um, or ammo up here, either one or both if you really want to. That can also work. I've tried thin containment filled with overcharger, but honestly, I've never really had that much success with it. it. It just doesn't feel that great. And I usually run through ammo pretty quick. And plasma burn is okay as well because you can just use charge shots regularly or because you can just use normal shots regularly and it's not going to be a downside, especially now with the corrosive sludge bump. You can be lighting that on fire with normal shots and then shoot the uh, bigger AOE shot into crowds. So I'd recommend probably one of these two, not really the thin containment filled. It feels a little bit awkward with this overclock. All right, and then our last overclock is persistent plasma. 
This one lowers our charge shot damage and our charge shot AOE, but it gives us persistent plasma. This is plasma that stays in an area um, once the charge shot hits. Now this plasma radiates to a three and a quarter meter radius around where you hit, dealing 35 and a half damage of fire to every enemy inside of it. That's per second, and it slows all enemies by 20%. This also lasts for almost eight seconds. So you can wall off an area very well with it. I would consider this one probably the best overall overclock for the uh, EPC right now, besides maybe the energy rerouting. That one's pretty nice too, just because of how flexible it is. This one is also pretty flexible because even though you're losing out on charge shot damage, and I wouldn't recommend trying to buff the charge shot damage, it's not that great if you do it that way. Um, it, it's not going to be bad, but I feel like the plasma itself can take care of this. You can also stack the slowdown buffs from this with other slowdowns that Driller has. You can stack this with the Neurotoxin Grenade, and you can stack it with the Sludge Pump. This also emits the Plasma, which can catch the Sludge on fire normally, so you don't need to have something like Plasma Burn on top of it. You could if you want. So the way that I usually build this is pretty much the same way that I build my uh, tool setup. So I go Larger Battery. Either one of these is fine. It's completely your call, whichever you're more comfortable with. Usually I go with the regular shots, though, just to pick off things. Go with the ammo uh, reserved in Tier 3. Go with extra ammo in Tier 4. And then go with thin containment filled. I found that this is a pretty strong build, especially when combined with the Sludge Pump. Really, any of the Sludge Pumps besides maybe Sludge Blast. And even then, it's not particularly bad. You can have a lot of utility, and you don't need to be using thin containment filled. Uh, during combat. You can just charge this up and fire it at something like your sludge. That way you light it on fire thanks to this. So that's all the overclocks for the EPC and the ways that I built them. Hopefully this kind of helped you guys out. The EPC is a very flexible weapon and has a lot of utility with it. It can kind of work in just about every role, whether you want single target damage, AOE damage, or utility. There's something there for everybody. A special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you would like to be a part of that, there are links down in the description. Thanks everybody who does that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!